I wanted to go over the expected annualized return for the zero days to expiration iron condor and SBX. I have had a lot of questions on what kind of return can you expect. First, just wanted to go over the SBX zero days to expiration iron condor basics, just so everyone is on the same page. So the iron condor consists of both a short put spread and a short call spread. You can either sell both spreads as one order or split it into two. I usually split it into two separate orders, but it's just up to personal preference what you do. The Iron Condor is on zero DTE expirations, which is Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for SBX. And one thing to note is once every month there is a AM settled expiration. You do not want to trade the AM expirations because those expire Friday morning and your last chance to trade them is Thursday night. And so you have overnight risk from Thursday to Friday and the decay is not as fast on Thursday. So make sure you're always doing the PM settled expirations. In Tastyworks, all the PM expirations look like normal options. If it's an AM settled contract, it'll actually show AM on the platform. Delta, the short option, should be around 5 or 10 delta. If you go higher than that, then your win rate drops. And then I buy the first long that is 5 cents. I go out as far as I need to. The calls are generally narrower than the puts because of the put skew. Buying the long that is 5 cents, that's just for uh, buying power reduction and that makes it a synthetic strangle. Then for for each spread or iron condor, I set a stop loss on the short leg only at 3x the credit received on the short strike only, and that gives me a two times net loss. Now on the profit side, I hold the trade expiration if the stop loss isn't hit. And then for more information, you can check out my uh, YouTube video that I have in the description link below. Note that there are other variations of this trade available online. Uh, traders should find what works for them. Returns will vary based on the mechanics. So now let's go over some of the iron condor or risk basics. For this trade, uh, you should never risk more than 2% of your account in any one trade. That just means that your 2x net loss should be a maximum of 2% of your account value. And that just makes it so when you have losing trades, you're able to trade the next day. And also your buying power reduction should be less than 50% of your account. That's based on the spread width of the call and or the put side. And always respect the stop losses. Uh, this type of trade, these low delta trades, risk management is absolutely vital and if you don't use that a small loss can turn into a big loss pretty quick because of the gamma not following the above will increase your risk of blowing up your account using the strategy only use this strategy if you are an advanced level options trader all right so first we're gonna look at the put spread side of the iron condor uh, look at those returns back testing was done from January 2012 through December 2019 uh, one contract each Monday Wednesday Friday no re-entering selling 5 Delta or 10 Delta short leg and and buying the five cent long leg. First, we'll look at the five delta short put side. That one had a win rate of about 78 and a half percent. The average credit was 44 cents. Uh, the max drawdown over the 2012 to 2019 period was about $2,000. Max loss on any given day was $145. The average spread width for the five delta short put was about $60. And the premium capture here was about 35.5 percent. So that means each day you're expected to bank about 15 dollars per trade so out of that $44 credit you keep about $15 over the long run annual return if you do this every week that's 52 weeks times three 156 trades per year times that 1562 per trade and that is $2,400 per year and that does not include commissions fees or slippage if we look back at the max risk of 2% uh, we have our $145 which was our max loss for any given day divide that by 2% and your minimum account value for five delta short put should be 72.50. Also, you should look at the 50% buying power reduction. So here the average spread width was $60. So that's about $6,000 per trade. With that $6,000 buying power reduction, divide that by 50% and you get a $12,000 account. You take the worst case scenario, so for one five delta short put spread should have $12,000. So now let's look at the 10 delta short put. Win rate is 75 and a half percent. Average credit is over double, 93 cents. Max drawdown is about double, about $4,000 over that time frame. Max loss on any given day is 512, and that's because of the higher credit. Uh, average spread width for this one was about $75. Premium capture for this one was about 25%, which comes out to about $23 per trade. You make a little bit more 
but you're also risking a little bit more with that 10 delta short put in annual return it's about $3,500 per year and similarly we look at the max risk of 2% so that $512 max loss divided by 2% you're looking at uh, almost a $26,000 account to put on the 10 delta short put um, max BPR of 50% so that spread width of $75 is 7500 divided by 50% is 15,000. So for the 10 delta short put, you should have about a $26,000 account compared to a $12,000 account for the five delta short put. And then lastly, the 10 delta short put is about a 13.7% annual return based on the $25,600 account. So now let's look at the call spread side. Uh, same time frame, month contract, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So let's look at the five delta short call first. So in rate, 75.6%, average credit, 35 cents, max drawdown of a thousand bucks, max loss of 116, average spread width of $25. All of these numbers are quite a bit less than the put side. And that's just because of the put skew on the S&P 500. So then the premium capture is about 28, 6.8%, which comes out to about $9 per trade. So not really a big money maker. Uh, annual return based on three trades per week comes out to about 1400 bucks a year. Max risk of 2%, doing the same math as before. $5,800 account uh, based on the 50% BPR rule. We're at $5,000 account. So on that call side, you wanna have at least $6,000. And the nice thing about doing an iron condor is if you put on both the call and the put side, the margin requirement is just the larger of the two. So then the annual return based on those numbers are about 24%. 10 delta, win rate lower at 71.5%. Average credit about double, 73 cents. Max drawdown two and a half times out of the five delta at 2,500. Max loss at 410. Average spread, it's $35 with premium cash capture for that one is 14.5%, which comes out to just over $10 per trade. And the annual return is about $1,600 per year. So only $200 more than the five delta short call. Then the max risk of 2% should have about $21,000 account or 50% BPR should have a $7,000 account. Based on the $20,500 account value, you're looking at about a 7.8% annual return. Let's put the put and call side together and look at the iron condor as a whole. The low data is based on numbers and our only estimates that you do not include commissions, fees, or slippage. Low results will definitely vary. These numbers do not guarantee any results and each trader is responsible for their own trades and risk only what they are ready to lose. First box here, we're looking at the annual profit and loss for commissions, fees, and slippage. One contract that open on the top side, we have the calls, both the five delta and the 10 delta. And on the left-hand side, we have the puts with the five delta and 10 delta. This $3,800 per year is if you do a five delta put and five delta call. This 5,100 is 10 delta call, 10 delta put, and 4,900 for the 10 delta put and five delta call. So you can see that the 10 delta on both sides gives you the highest actual return. But let's look at some other data here. So this is the max loss based on the back testing. You can see the two five deltas would only give you about a $261 max loss. Whereas the, the 10 delta calls and puts is about $922. So quite a bit more risk with doing the 10 delta options. Uh, max drawdown, $3,000 for your account if you do the five deltas and it's six six thousand five hundred dollars about for the ten delta. And you can see if you know if you want to do the ten delta put and five delta call, the drawdown is forty five hundred, and the max loss back here is five hundred and fifty five. And then the next one, minimum recommended account size. So for the five delta calls and puts, you should have about twelve thousand dollars in your account compared to about twenty six thousand if you're going to do the ten delta put. So it doesn't matter if you do the five delta or the ten delta call. If you do the ten delta put, you should have about twenty six thousand in your account. If you do the ten delta call and five delta put, you should have about twenty thousand. So again, this kind of points to using the five delta on both sides from an efficiency standpoint. And you can see that here with annual return um, based on the minimum recommended account sides, uh, your return is about 31.7% for the five deltas. And you're just uh, in that 19 to 20% range for the other three combinations. And this is just one contract that open. So you could also do one put contract and two call contracts if you want to mix and match. Based on this data, actually, I, I typically do the 10 delta on both sides but after looking at these numbers a little bit closer i think i'm going to reduce my delta and go more towards the five delta and the calls and puts i think they're a little bit more efficient so hopefully you guys found this video worthwhile if you have any questions please leave them below thank you